Thank you. The end of school! <laughs> That's so cool to say. I want you guys to have that experience too. So I'll say it and then you say it back to me. All right, how's this? The end of school! The end of school! <laughs> Wasn't that fun? Think about all the songs that were written about the end of school. Um, <clears throat> Well, I think that this, this uh, is aptly named, the end of school. Because when I think about school, I think about a building that contains all of the information, all of the knowledge. And you go there, you get what you need, you get all full, and then you leave. Whereas education really means to lead an individual out. So, the end of school where you have to go and get all the information to go somewhere else to the idea of education and becoming yourself and leading oneself out. You know, there was a gentleman here this week who was featured in our Future, future Global Leaders Summit yesterday and his name is Emerson Sparks. And what's interesting, maybe even phenomenal about Emerson is his path to education. You see, he was only 12 years old when he convinced his parents that he should be allowed to drop out of school. The end of school! <laughs> you could say, you could say, you could say. <laughs> but he wasn't asking his parents to ditch his education. He simply felt that he could self-educate better than what he was getting in traditional school. Now his parents agreed and Emerson began his journey down his path of education outside of the classroom. He read lots of books, studied successful people and what made them so, and utilized a wealth of online resources. At only 12 years of age, he began MuggleNet.com. Right, Harry Potter fans out there? <laughs> now, MuggleNet was a, a Harry Potter fan site that gained 50 million page views every month and even caught the eye of the author, J.K. Rowling. Well, today at the age of 27, Emerson is the founder and CEO of Sparks Media, where he's created a predictive science to forecast the virality of websites with a 90% success rate. He is on Inc.'s 30 Under 30, and Crane's 40 under 40. Leaving school before puberty isn't exactly what this talk is about, <laughs> but what Emerson's story shows is the potential not only for learning, but extremely successful learning beyond the walls of a classroom. So we've all heard of or maybe even experienced online courses like those offered through Coursera and maybe even received an online certificate or degree. Now, however, parents and children have resources to complete grades K through 12 through online self-guided curriculum. What? Is it the end of school? Maybe it is, maybe as we know it. It's definitely going through a transformation and that's what we're going to explore today, transformation. Now, my own path to rethink traditional education started in a classroom. And so I take you to my uh, high school chemistry class. The first day of class, I pull down the periodic table and have all of my students pick an element. And that's where they'd be for the whole semester. So if you were iron, I'd call you Effie. If you were gold, I'd say, hey you! <laughs> Thank you for laughing. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, and then next, I'd ask my students to pick whether they want it to be a solid, a liquid, or a gas. Okay, so the cool kids are like, solid, you know. And some of the girls would be like, liquid. And the geeks, who were thinking, where's she going with this, would say, gas. Now imagine you're 17 years old, you declare to your colleagues that you want to be a gas, you're going to hear some sounds. So immediately, I'd separate the class. The solids, you guys sit in the front row. Your molecules are packed tightly together and you will not move. 
Sometimes I would talk to them as if they weren't as smart as everybody else because they were solids, you know. And then the liquids, I'd rope off a section of the classroom and I'd say, your molecules are a little more spread out, but you will always take the shape of your container. And now the gases, of course, their molecules were all spread out, and they had all the freedom in the world. Now, what does every 17-year-old want more than anything? Freedom. The end of school! <laughs> so I'd say, all right, you know, gases, you're free to move about. If I left the door open, they could leave. They had everything. Well, immediately, the solids would be like, well, that is not fair. And I'd say, well, then you've got to change your state of matter or like class mobility, we have to begin to change our state of mind. And our journey together is gonna to be about how to get those freedoms that we want. Um, so my kids did great. We had a lot of fun together, they scored very well on their tests, and every day another student of mine would come back and take me out to lunch. It was my free lunch law. Um, and so the question was, what are you doing with your science? What is your truth, right? Science is the study of truth. And so probably one of the brightest kids that I ever worked with uh, came to see me one day. And I said, what are you doing with your science? He said, well, I'm working with chemicals. I got all excited. What are, you, are you smashing atoms? What are you doing? He says, no, I'm working in cleaning services at one of the hotels downtown, and you'd be surprised at what people don't know about the basic properties of ammonia. Well, I felt my heart break. I mean, this kid was brilliant. Probably the smartest student I'd ever worked with. He could have figured out cold fusion. And he was basically telling me that he was cleaning toilets. And I knew something had to change. Well, I wear my heart on my sleeve. He could see that I was upset. And he said, Sandy, I don't think you're listening to me. You've always taught us that leadership is making opportunities for others. And it doesn't matter whether I'm in a lab coat or a lecture hall, I'm teaching. And that's what you told us to do. So on the way back to my office, I knew this was a defining moment in my life. My best friend and I worked at the same organization. And we got our heads together and we said we have to change this. Now we love technology because it's creative, it doesn't matter what you look like, it's a meritocracy. And by teaching programming, we could write the rules. It was also 1998. There were dot coms popping up everywhere. There was a tremendous opportunity here. But the really cool thing was that there's a core set of skills that sit between technology and leadership that we could teach so that folks could not only get great jobs in IT, they could also apply those skills to the communities that we come from. So we could be change agents in our businesses, building systems and things that would change the nature of business, but we could also be agents of change in our communities by using empathy and reciprocity and resiliency and all the things that inner city kids are already faced with building and developing in their life by overcoming adversity. So that was it. That was the moment. It's now 15 years later. We are, uh, have 90% placement rates for our graduate, and the average earning increase is over 300%. Um, <clears throat> 27 of our alums are homeowners, and 75% are actively engaged in their community as leaders. Thank you. Thank you. So just a little piece about the power of education and transformation and thinking about how do we lead change.